So I left off talking about the uh, burrowing machines, and I remember watching it going, what, what was the purpose? I mean, you know, the dome was already partially open. The minions were already, you know, pouring in. They were already overwhelming the heroes and, you know, you know if only the Wakandan army had, oh, I don't know, shields and, like, you know, high-tech spears that shot plasma bolts or something. Wouldn't that be helpful? So anyway... I'm going, they're already winning. What do they need these burrowing machines for? And then you see Scarlet Witch, and it's like, now I get it. Now I get it. They needed, because they had established that they needed Scarlet Witch to guard Vision, they had to come up with some lame-ass excuse to somehow get Scarlet Witch away from Vision and onto the battlefield. And the best they could think of was the burning uh, battle machines that absolutely had no value whatsoever. And to show how insignificant they were, when Scarlet Witch showed up, in like four seconds, destroys them. Four seconds. So, they were literally nothing more... So these big ass, you know, that were wiping out, you know... Uh, the Wakandan army and, and, and heroes or whatever was nothing more than a distraction. So either that's how powerful Scarlet Witch is, sorry Captain Marvel, or how useless the whole thing was as a diversion in the first place. So then it's like, well, okay, she defeated them, she's going to go back. Nope. The female henchman comes and punches her in the face. Who, by the way, wants to kill her, but punch in the hand that she has a sword in, punches her. Like, what's with all the swords? I mean, first of all, if she was supposed to kill him, she could have just stabbed him, but no. It, so, but it's like, what's with all the swords? It's like, no, Disney, we already saw Lord of the Rings. We don't need your version of how you think you would have done it, okay? Because it was done way better than you are ever, are ever going to do, sorry. So, Scarlet Witch falls, and then th this, this was just... Oh. So now, the female henchman's about to kill Scarlet Witch. But, Okoye and Black Widow appear, and then they start fighting. So all three women start fighting. All the while, Scarlet Witch is on the ground just lying there. Because she's awake. She's conscious. Because she turned around to face the female henchman. She's literally just lying there on the ground, not helping. She doesn't do anything. She could have easily taken her out. I mean, she took out all those, you know, burrowing battle machines. You think she's not going to be able to take out the, the one female henchman? Which she ends up doing in like two seconds. But you know why? Because one, they needed to have, they needed to give Scarlet, they needed to give Black Widow something to do in this movie, because she was absolutely useless. Sorry, I'm not a Black Widow fan. Okay, I'm still bitter over the fact that Hawkeye wasn't in this. And I will, okay. Black Widow is a martial artist. Hawkeye has, oh, I don't know, high-tech bows that can do more than anything Black Widow could do. But no, no, no. no. Hawkeye's a dumb idea. He's a useless superhero. But Black Widow... Look, the only reason you guys like Black Widow is because Black Widow looks better than Hawkeye in, in a skin-tight black suit. Just admit it. The only reason you like Black Widow is not because she's a better superhero. It's just that she looks better in tight-fitting jeans. Ooh, did I say that out loud? So anyway, so then, to even further prove that, you know, she, Scarlet Witch could have ended the fight, it's like, they have the fight, and it's like, the director goes, okay, we're done with this fight, how do we end it? Oh, that's easy, just have Black Widow toss her off and have her killed and, like, like, with, with absolutely no effort whatsoever. You see what I mean? 
It's so simplistic and so obvious. Well, obviously, you, not to you, obviously, because you're idiots, but whatever. Oh, the quill moment. Okay. Okay, follow me on this, will you? So we have the battle, the scene on Titan where the Guardians are... It's the ambush on, on Thanos. So, Doctor Strange starts off by using his red energy webbing to hold down uh, Thanos' arm with the gauntlet. No, does he try to take off the gauntlet because... Okay, at this point, it is firmly established in the movie that defeating Thanos is no longer the plan. Okay? Because everything they could have done to try to actually defeat Thanos, they purposely do not have the heroes do. Okay? Okay? Even ignoring, even if we ignore the teleporting of, of, of what Doctor Strange can do, even if we ignore the time stone that, that, that Doctor Strange has, nothing that they do is actually meant to defeat Thanos. And I'll show you. So, Doctor Strange is holding down Thanos' arm. Now, Quill throws, his, throws some device that shoots up some energy and actually incapacitates Thanos' other arm. Okay? So Thanos' off, uh, offhand is, is incapacitated. It's, it's firmly established. It now has Thanos held. Then Drax comes in, holds his leg or whatever, for whatever reason. Then, Doctor Strange lets go so that Iron Man can now, you know, hold down that arm. Then, Doctor Strange, for the first time, well, oh, hey, we have a tel I can teleport. Teleports Mantis onto Thanos. Then, then, here's, here's the point. Instead of actually doing anything useful, instead of actually helping to take down Thanos, instead of actually trying to help take the gauntlet off, what do they have Doctor Strange do? They have him use his red energy webbing to hold down the arm that is already being successfully held down by Quill's device. Just so that it can make it look like, like Doctor Strange doing something. Do, do you understand? Doctor Strange was, was, was irrelevant after he teleported Mantis. Now, then we get the Quill moment where Quill is talking to uh, Thanos, which is so, it's like, not only is it so obvious that even you idiots could figure it out, in case you didn't, the characters in the movie pointed it out for you. Because Iron Man's going, don't engage, help us take this off. Like the, the character, the, the movie's even telling you, in case you missed the stupid, the movie is there to help you out and you still don't get it. What does Quill do? Ignores him. Why? Because he's stupid. And and here's the funny thing. It would have been, it's like Iron Man would have, Iron Man should have gone, hey, Dr. Strange, do you mind helping us take the gauntlet off? And Dr. Strange just goes, hey, can't you see I'm busy holding down, a, holding down the arm that Quill's device is already successfully holding down? I'm busy here. Just stupid. And this this is a this is a minor thing. This is a minor thing, but I just couldn't help but catch it. During the whole Quill versus Thanos little talk, the the, the camera will pan every once in a while, and you'll see Spider Man and Iron Man in the background, like like tugging, tugging at at the gauntlet as if they're still trying to take them off, take it off. It was like it's like they're not they're not even straining or forcing. It's just like Oh yeah, that's right, we're supposed to be like taking the gauntlet off it. I know, it's a minor thing, but it was just, it was just so sad to me that it was, and it was so obvious. Anyway, I'm sorry, I don't. So again, so then Thanos frees himself. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Right? And then, when Thanos is engaging with uh, Doctor Strange and that magic fight again the movie characters are telling you the stupid in this movie because Thanos literally says to Doctor Strange you failed to use your greatest weapon 
No shit. How can the movie how can how can the characters in the movie figure this out that you guys can't? Even when you're told, you still have no idea what the hell's going on. Oh, and then then Thanos fights uh, Iron Man, right? And so Iron Man is using every weapon at his disposal. He's using whatever energy beams, missiles, everything. And decides to use his nanotechnology to make a blade. What, what is it with blades and Thanos? I mean, like, Gamora tried to use blades on Thanos, you know, when it was the fake Thanos on, on at Nowhere, at the Collectors. You know, Loki tried to use a dagger. Nebula, when she first shows up on Titan, try, Nebula's using a sword. If only, if only they, if only she had access to, you know, it, uh, advanced alien technology. Uh, what is it with swords in this movie? So anyway, Thanos takes the blade, right, and then stabs uh, Iron Man with it, right? Cool scene, high intensity. Okay, that's not the problem. It's how Iron Man, or how Tony Stark, deals with the wound. Now, I'm going to have to go back a bit. In the scene in the ship where it's uh, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, and Spider-Man fighting the wizard henchman. I don't remember his name. And then Iron Man blows a hole in the hall, sucks the uh, wizard henchman out. Iron Man, there's a, there, on his gauntlet there's these two little nozzles that he uses to spray on the hole in the hall. So now, the film has established in the audience's brain that this nozzle th shoots out, I don't know, some type of chemical adhesive, I guess. I don't know. And it's used to seal the hole in the hall. Now we fast forward to when Iron Man is now being stabbed. He uses the same chemical adhesive that he used to seal the hole to seal his wound. You get it? Okay. Now, in case some of you are so brain-dead idiotic that you still don't understand how stupid that is, I'm going to even help you out. If, I ha if, if I'm on my window, there's uh, cracking and holes, I can use caulking to seal the holes, to seal the crack. But that doesn't mean that if I get a stab wound, I'm going to use caulking to seal my stab wound. But you guys are such simpletons that you associated the, the sealing of the hole, the hull, with him being able to seal his wound. You just... You, get, you, got, you guys just went for gold. You guys just went for gold to actually, you are so easily manipulated because you're such simpletons. Okay, Stormbreaker. Oh, God. Okay. I don't like Stormbreaker in this movie because there's just, okay. First of all, they could have at least gotten the way the axe handle looks because Stormbreaker is in case you didn't already know in case you didn't know which I'm sure that's 90% of you Stormbreaker is from the comic books because there was a character named Better Ray Bill it's a long story I'm not going to get into it if you want you could always go to those YouTubers that talk about th those fake gamer YouTubers who will we'll talk about this and explain it to you. You know what? Avoid the middleman. Just go read the Wikipedia page that they read from. You'll, you, it, it's faster. Hey, okay. The, these fake, okay. All these, all these, I, I love how, I love how, I love how pathetic, not even just the YouTubers, because they're just simply responding. These how, this is how pathetic you as an audience are. You actually think that the more uh, little toys and action figures that are in the background, 
the more of an actual comic book geek that makes you. Here, here hold on, hold on. Look at this. Okay. I got a, I got a little Hulk, little Hulk here, and I got a little, a little Spider Man. Does that, does that, does that add more legitimacy to my, you know, analysis? And, and it, oh, the toys. It, they're, they're not. Hold on. Hold on. is just one box. This is how collectors they're still in the box. Okay? They're still in the box. You don't just open them up and they're all little knickknacks. They're all they're all nothing figures. Jesus Christ. I I don't understand how how you guys have totally neutered the concept of, of comic book fan, of what it means to be a geek. You are in... Let's go back to the stupid movie. So we're talking about Stormbreaker. So Stormbreaker... Th this is how Stormbreaker was created, okay? They melt bars of Uru metal, they pour the metal into a mold, and within 10 seconds, no forging, no hammering, no magical enchantments, no Odin blessing it, no space magic whatsoever, okay? You just get this mold of, a, of an axe, of a double axe handle, okay? Yet somehow has all these magical powers? How? Who gives a shit? And then, and then he's looking for the handle. Okay. I hate this scene because it's so forced. How stu- Why wouldn't he have gotten the, 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 the handle ready ahead of time? No, no. We have to give groups. Okay, some value, and you know what, for the love of God, can we please stop having Groot as a teenager? The joke is done. We get it. Can we please have full-grown Groot, you know, full-grown badass Groot? Oh, but hey, you know what it was? Forget about that. Forget about that. It can now magically heal Thor because, hey, Thor's dying. Don't pay attention to all the stupid that's going on. Thor's dying. Oh, and the, the axe is the only thing that can heal him. How? Why? Because the story writer, because the writers have no goddamn clue what to do. So then, I, I wish that was all there was to it, but unfortunately, there's more. So, uh, he gets healed. Now, another magical ability from out of nowhere that Stormbreaker has is it creates the Rainbow Bridge. Now that's not bad enough. But remember, Thor is looking for Thanos. So where does he go? To Earth. Why? Why would he go to Earth? Oh, because there's a battle going on. Except Thor doesn't know that there's a battle going on. So why in the name of God does Thor go to Earth? He, he should have been going to Titan, because at the very least he knows that's the name of the planet that Titan said he was going to go to earlier in the movie, in the beginning of the movie. Yes, the fights were amazing. Thor kicking ass was amazing. But the stupidity to get him there, okay, actually means something. I know it doesn't mean anything to you guys. Because anything can happen. And as long as there's pretty little pictures on the screen, you're happy. Well, you know what? I want more than that. Okay? You want to know why? Because it happened in the earlier movies. Okay? Iron Man 1 didn't need that much, didn't need stupid. Guardians of the Galaxy didn't need stupid. 
I said it before and I'll say it again. Winter Soldier didn't meet stupid. You know why? Because they had great stories, competent storytelling, and they didn't need stupid to get from point A to point B. The reason I'm pissed, okay, is because I'm invest I got invested in these movies. Okay? I actually care. <clears throat> I want them to be good. But the majority of you guys don't give a damn. All you want is pretty little pictures on the screen and 